Hey, what's up, my people? John Middlecoff, new YouTube channel. What I need you to do, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, share with your friends. Appreciate everyone that has. It's the podcast, three and out. You can listen wherever you listen to podcasts. Apple, Spotify, we got you covered. Also, thevolume.com, thevolume.com. We got merch right here, flex fit hat. Go to thevolume.com, get yourself a three and out hat. Let's talk San Francisco Green Bay here. Statistically, it was an incredibly close game. The time of possession was even 5.3 yards a play for Green Bay, 5.6 for San Francisco. You had two great running backs, two offensive coaches, two young quarterbacks. The difference is Jordan Love had a couple picks and Purdy was cleaner. But my well, first luckily, takeaway is I mean, balls are flying all over the place. He could have thrown about three or four. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's the reality of Jordan Love. He's erratic, but he's really good. My first takeaway on this game is. Holy shit. If Aaron Rodgers would have just not audibled out of Matt LaFleur's offense, you know, it, the other thing is crazy about this is that Aaron knew how good Aaron Jones was. He's a stud. Yeah. He's not McCaffrey, well, but the, he, in an argument, is the second best back in the league. And you know how good LaFleur is and the O line is and Watson and Romeo Dobbs. Now, he didn't know Aaron wouldn't know they would draft two tight ends. Musgrave's really talented. But Aaron left that and kind of got his way out of there. I'm watching them today, and I'm like, the, the, you could make an argument by next year if Jordan Love just cleans up some of his erratic play. This is going to be a six-year run, four- to six-year run of NFC championship-level players, right? One thing I wrote down is, you know, we, and I'm guilty of this, we talk so much about Kyle and McVay, those two guys, head and shoulders as the young crew. I think we got to throw Matt LaFleur in that group. I mean, what he did, he had that team show up, and they were kicking the Niners' ass. I don't he care what the stats say. Shanahan. Oh, all night long. I mean, all the Niners got, that is one of the luckier wins I can remember. I mean, they've had some impressive wins. That was an all-time lucky win. And I, that's, I had multiple people in the NFL texting me this morning. Like, I can't even imagine being on the Packers staff waking up this morning. I mean, you, had, you didn't have them on the ropes. You had them beat. And yep. LaFleur deserves, he's, he's everything you want, right? He is a good head coach, clearly. The guys like him. He is the offensive play caller, and now he's proven he can get along with an absolute superstar. Aaron really liked him. And now he can also develop a young guy that we had never seen. Like, what else can you ask out of a coach? So Green Bay looks like they have struck oil. I I had some question marks just because, you know, he inherited Aaron Rodgers. We'll see. Well, now you see what he's doing with all these young players. They go on the road to San Francisco. We saw what he did two weeks ago to the Cowboys. I mean, he beat the shit out of them. What a night. I, I know... There's no moral victories in the National Football League, but what a night for LaFleur. I mean, seriously. I mean, to have that team on the brink, that they were a 10-point underdog against a team that every single human and their mother picked to win that game. That was also John incredible effort. What I said before the Dallas and San Francisco games is, I hope Brock Purdy and Dak can play from behind. They take leads. I don't think they've turned the ball over in the first quarter all season. So again, this was the frustration with sometimes with Aaron that he would, and Greg Cosell said this for years, like there's made plays, there's successful plays. And Aaron's going to kind of blow some of those off is that what they're doing in their first quarter is the, it's scripted plays. Matt's like here, yeah. run the first eight. They take leads. Uh, the DAC did not react well to it, but I, I mean, for the first half, I was, I was sitting there watching thinking Gr green Bay has young talent, San Francisco old, old talent. Are we seeing like a tipping point moment that San Francisco's old talent never gets a ring? Because I'm telling you, for big chunks of that game, I'm like, no, Green Bay can't win this game. They're not, they're too young. At halftime, I, I, I really thought Green Bay was a better team. One major issue that really came to light, and we talked about this last week based on the Strauss article about the inclement weather of the AFC teams different yeah. than the NFC that doesn't really have a lot of weather. Well, while it was 60 degrees, it was raining. Purdy can't grip the ball in the rain. That's right. We had Cleveland. He couldn't grip the ball. This game, he couldn't grip the ball. He came out with a glove. He even said, I was a little uncomfortable. He immediately took it off. He could, there was a play where he has the ball dropping back, going to his towel to dry yes. off. He is not comfortable. And, you know, he doesn't have big hands, but neither does Mahomes, but clearly he's comfortable in it. Purdy is not comfortable in inclement weather. Now he's lucky he plays in Santa Clara 99% of the games are going to be good weather games. But if you do get weather, uh, you, you almost got to short the 49ers because he's now proven a couple times, not in torrential downpours, just a light. Cleveland was raining. 
This game was rainy. This wasn't like sleet or snow or a driving rainstorm. It was just Bay Area, Bay Area wet. And and he could not grip the ball. And their offense, I, Kyle had a weird game. You know, I'd say typically he is very, very, he's one of those guys, right? Like all these coaches that spend 90, 100 hours during the week getting together a game plan. And in his mind, his confidence, and he should be, my game plan is going to dominate. And most of the time it does. But he's not king of doing the Belichick. Well, this isn't working a quarter in. I'm scrapping everything. And I'm that's changing. right. He doesn't want to do that. That's right. And yesterday, he came into this game spreading them out. Well, Kyle, your quarterback can't grip the football. You have Christian McCaffrey, who's the best running back in the NFL. They're pounding you on the in the run game. Well, just run the ball. Slow down, settle down the game. But he kept spreading it out, which is honestly the antithesis of what he stands for and does. It was a bizarre game, and they got lucky some of the turnovers – and their defense kind of had held some red zone situations, held in the field goals, but he just wouldn't pivot off well, the pass. This has always been my knock on Shanahan, and I think he's great. McVeigh, of all those young guys, McVeigh is the culture setter. He's the great culture coach, gets the most out of everybody. Um, Shanahan is the scheme master. And then LeFleur is a little of both. But Shanahan is really, really tied and loyal to his game plan. What's that's why that that it is that play sheet is his that's his baby and when it the, you know they don't do well when they trail no they don't they don't he he is just somebody that believes in his play sheet <laughs> and so there was some record i think it was finally broken that they they couldn't win a game when they trailed late in the game i forget what the number was it was like 7 points heading into the fourth quarter he was 0 and 38 and technically <laughs> they kicked a field goal the first play of the fourth quarter but yeah he yeah. technically broke the record but but i think to your point was he my takeaway was he, he, when I watched San Francisco, I'm like, there's no rhythm to this offense. Cause every time they should have run, they threw Purdy couldn't grip though. I mean, one time Purdy, a ball out in the flat, he short hopped it. It wasn't even close. You're no, like, he, uh, yeah, it was crazy. I, and to me, football, like in our industry, it's so easy. What we do now, like to pivot, something works, try it, the internet, everything digital, if it doesn't work, you pivot, you change, try something new. That's coaching, right? If something's working, stay with it. If it's not, you change. That's what all the best coaches do. And he was just so tied to that game plan of spreading them out. But his quarterback just could not hold on to the football. And honestly, that would have been a game if they lost. It would have been really hard to shake. And it would have put then a ton of pressure on the Purdy situation. And like you said with Kyle, in a weird way, you know, when you think now with even McVay, forever with Goff, McVay was the star of the team. But now with Stafford, you know, Stafford yeah. is his equal. You know, in a weird way, Kyle is kind of the star of the offense. Yes. Yeah. And it sometimes when everything's going well, everyone else gets a share in it. But when it's not, it's like he kind of hoards these ideas. Debo gets injured. They clearly had a bunch of plays for him. And he can't just like, okay, we're not going to do these. He's handing, he's handing balls to their third wide receiver in the backfield. It was crazy. It, you know, luckily they have enough talent. Jordan Love was young and threw the ball to the other team, but holy moly. It, you know, the and I was thinking about this, is that think about the quarterbacks that are left. Mahomes, Josh Allen, number one pick, Jared Goff, and Brock Purdy. And as I was watching that game and, and they pull out the win, I mean, it's funny because Brock had a nice final drive, all schemed up by Kyle, and you yeah. deserve credit for that. He didn't for shrink. Sure. But he's mentally tough. Like that's not Brock Purdy's that's, problem. Yeah, Maturity, that's mental strength. toughness. Kyle loves that. Yeah, that that's. I mean, obviously, you don't walk into that locker room with Hall of Famers and own the locker room. So exactly. And Sam Darnold acknowledging that he is cognitively the fastest thinker he's ever, and that's so is Kyle. So it works. But it, it, you've got to be honest. If if you watch that game and don't see the limitations of Brock Purdy going forward, like you know the great coaches, Sean Payton has said the best weeks of coaching are, are when you play like crap and win you can just yeah. coach the hell out of them san francisco john lynch and shanahan have to have a private conversation and it's like we, we we're, we're kind of limited i mean again here burrow's coming back and by the way you may have a caleb williams and a drake may go to the nfc kyler murray for a whole season stafford's coming back i don't know jordan loves getting better I, when i watched that game even after they won i thought it kind of changes how i look at san francisco if San Francisco beats Detroit, and I'm with you, I think it's a go either way game. I, I think it's 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 very competitive the game. The Niners' run defense is not good right now, and those two running backs for Detroit look like horses. And 
they're not getting the pass rush, so they can't with Hufunga and average corners. You can beat them. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the secondaries left in this league, they're not very good. No. I mean, I mean, it, it, Buffalo's, you could gash. Detroit's isn't very good. I don't think the Niners is. But when the Niners had a great pass rush, like a prime example is the Eagles. Last year, they had a great pass rush. So it kind of masks their deficiencies yeah. in the back end. Well, San Francisco's pass rush isn't the same. It's a very average secondary. And I think Goff's going to have some success with it. But I, I watch Purdy and I'm like, you, you can't win with shootouts here if it's inclement weather. I mean, he there's some limitations with him. Yeah, to me, he's just uh, Jekyll and Hyde when you put if, – if it's going to rain. If you tell me it's raining on Sunday, I, I would have major reservations picking the 49ers. You know, and I, I think it gets back to this this Lions team. I think there are some parallels to last year's Eagles team. Yeah. Right? Their head coach, great motivator. The guys really like him, and he's got two great coordinators. I mean, those two yes. guys are interviewing everywhere for head coaching jobs. Yes. I mean, the offensive coordinator looks like the next Shane Steichen. So you're playing a team that has all in on the head man, who's just clearly a great leader, and two scheme guys, especially their offensive coordinator, that are just in the peak of their powers right now. And you get a team coming with a ton of momentum. And the other thing is, a little bit like the Packers, now two weeks in a row, the Lions were favored today, but at the end of the day, they're the Lions. You get to play with a little house money. You know, there's a pressure on the Eagles, the Cowboys, and the 49ers. But let's face it, just isn't there with the Lions or the Bucks. Or even the Packers, because once they get rid of Rodgers, they kind of, you know, release that elephant in the room. There's a tightness. You feel it with the Niners. And you kind of felt today with the Bills, too. Now, the Niners won. The Bills didn't. But it was like anything less than making a run here is devastating. We all know it. Like, this is, no one's running away from the expectations here. Now, the difference, and this is, it's a black and white league. Either win or you don't. So, you know, you got to be careful going game to game. Maybe the Niners get a bunch, much better effort. They get an extra day of rest. But... Holy moly. I mean, if it if it sprinkles a little bit, I mean, that, that shouldn't be that big of a problem. Should it come? This is the National Football League. Yeah, it's um it's it's just for the first time ever. You know how there's these moments during the season, John, there was a moment. Um, I haven't bought into the Cowboys forever. I and did. then they went on this run and I bought into them. And then I watched them play Miami. And I thought, they are, they are Miami. It's just more obvious that Miami is a little bit of a fake Gucci bag. So is Dallas. So yeah. is Dallas. And it changed the way I thought of them. That Niner game, when I, wa when I watch them play Baltimore, I'm like, okay, th th this is – you have some real – I mean, there are just certain t moments in a season. It's not always a blowout loss. I thought the Rams lost to Baltimore. I'm like, oh, Rams are for real. This is a real team. But when I watch the Niners um, lose to a, that Baltimore team that the Rams had played, you know, close, it it took something off the veneer of it. And then I watched them yesterday again, and I'm like, am I overvaluing their talent? Like, you look at the defensive linemen names, and 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 I just look at this and I think to myself, with Detroit's O line and run game, and with the lack of pass rush. I, I think I'm getting into the situation with the Niners is I, I'm thinking of the last four years and they're just not as good. Everybody's getting – the old guys are getting older and the young guys aren't quite as good. When when Christian McCaffrey goes to the bench and they're rubbing out he dealt, got a Charlie horse, I'm like, if he's out, they're in huge trouble. Well, Debo went out and threw them all off, and who knows his status, right? Uh, yeah, I think – the Niners got to the point, and they were doing this because they are a really physical team. They started bullying people. They did it to yes. the Eagles. They did it yes. to Dallas. And then for the first time, they got into the ring, and Mike Tyson, Chuck Liddell hit them right into the in the square in the jaw, and it was the Ravens. And it rattled them a little bit. And they kind of haven't had the same swag since, just from a, I'm tougher than you when I step in. Now, I don't think yesterday was about like a toughness because that was kind of the difference in the game. Their toughness kind of kept them in the game. But this Detroit team, I, I'm pretty sure they were the best – rush defense in the league they're very hard to run on so yeah. think about kyle i mean that's that throws him off a little bit if he can't run the ball so all of a sudden is he spreading it out is the weather kind of bad now i think i looked earlier today it wasn't supposed to rain but if purdy is average you're in major trouble now when major he's good, trouble they still got Ayuk. they got kittle mccaffrey can make plays Juwan jennings they can still score with detroit i think it's more likely that we're looking at a game maybe both teams are kind of approaching 30 kind of a shootout and that, that's what I would kind of expect because I don't think the 49ers defense right now is stopping much. And clearly the Lions, uh, God, they, they look 
they just look like they got it going on. I mean, they really do. 